Okay. Well, let's see here. What else can you do with a will besides naming an executor or a guardian for children or what have you? What are, what are some things to think about when you're putting it together? Yeah, well, there are actually quite a few things you can talk about in a will. Um, one of the big factors is you know, the big assets people think about. Um, you know, and sometimes those assets are even dealt with through beneficiary designation, like we mentioned life insurance. So sometimes what your will is primarily dealing with is your personal assets. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be things like your cars and the stuff in your house and, you know, jewelry and things like that. So deciding who gets that is another part of what goes into a will. Uh, and then another thing that people should talk about in a will if they have something uh, significant to say about it is special instructions like burial instructions or wedding cremation or things like that. It should be uh, discussed in your will so that it's part of your plan and you should then of course make people aware of what you're saying. So the people who would, the ones you're gonna name to handle your estate, they need to know what your wishes are before you die so first of all, they know where to find your will, and secondly, they have some idea what it says. So these things are not taking taking them by surprise. Yeah, uh, I actually had a so one, one thing. Um, yeah, it's really important to communicate this information, like you said, because they don't often read the will until sometime after you've passed away, and it may be after the funeral. Right. So you may want to have it in the will just to make sure it's covered there. But like you said, it's important to tell everybody and maybe even tell them where instructions are or give them instructions uh, beforehand. I, I had a, this uh, lovely uh, family, uh, brothers and sisters, that came to me and I think it was the oldest sister had passed away and they said, oh, she would have been mad. They said, we had a huge party funeral for her and she said she wanted a small private uh, inurnment and <laughs> <laughs> what have you? <laughs> but, but they didn't know what her wishes They didn't were. know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so it's really important. Uh, another thing uh, that, uh, that you didn't mention, uh, and maybe we should talk about a little bit, is, is disinheriting family members. Yeah, and this is something... Um, sensitive matter. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really tricky area of the law. You have to do it in a very... Um, a very particular way to make it actually work. So again, you know, estate planning just in general is to make things happen the way you want them to. And so if one of the things you want is to leave somebody out who otherwise would inherit from you according to the probate code or whatever, according to what expectations are, you can do that. You can leave your estate to anybody you want as long See. as it's your property. I mean, if it's someone else's property, like community property, your spouse has some rights to that. But if it's your property, you have the right to leave it to anybody you want to. Uh, but if you're going to leave people out who are your, uh, the, the normal recipients of your bounty, as they say, then you have to do it through a disinheritance provision and you have to be careful about that. And that brings us to another subject um, which is, has been around for a long time. There's something called a no contest clause that should go into a will if you're going to try to disinherit somebody or if you're even going to leave things to people in not exactly an equal fashion or in the way that like you yeah. have three children, but you don't leave it in three equal shares, um, you should have, at least consider having in your will a no contest clause. And uh, these have been around for many years and have been enforced in California for many years. But we have new legislation uh, that came into effect uh, recently, and it's changed the way that these clauses are written. So even people who have existing wills, for some of your audience who might be sitting there saying, well, I already have my will. Uh, there are changes that come along, and this is one of them where that probably should be reviewed mm -hmm. because it may not be effective. It may actually cause more more problems than, than, than it be helpful because the way the law changed is now people can contest your will if, as long as they have what's called probable cause to do so. Mm. And there are some other things you can do in a no contest law clause that you couldn't do before. So these are things that that should be either reviewed or when drafting a new will, they should be thought about. And if you're going to have a no contest clause, it should be in compliance with the new laws that apply to that. Right. Okay, and I'm going to bring up the keg of worms, and that is the previous marriage. <laughs> uh, so, um, so maybe you can talk for just a couple of minutes. And I know that folks, these things we could talk for days about. So uh, we're just hitting a few highlights. 
But what if you have adult children from a previous marriage? Uh, some right. Special well, thoughts there? Well, anytime you have uh, a prior marriage, you have issues that have to do with uh, the status of your property, and I mean uh, property you bring into the marriage is separate property. It can become community property, but it doesn't start out that way. You can also have create uh, community property or create community property with your spouse. Now, also, you can do it with uh, registered domestic partners. So um, uh, when you have these children from a prior relationship, um, they have certain rights to inherit from their natural parent. They may or may not have rights to inherit from the step-parent. It's possible for the step-parent to adopt children, in which case they would be treated as natural children. It's also possible that they don't adopt stepchildren, but they live in the home from the time they're a young age, and then they can acquire some rights to inherit from a, even a step-parent. Hmm. Um, but the, the thing is, you don't want your estate, the distribution of your estate, to end up being determined by who dies first. Mm -hmm. In other words, the order of death can change how this is distributed, who gets what. So, you know, a much better way to deal with that if you have a prior marriage situation is to do an estate plan and to identify all these relationships, who these people are, uh, and to then say what it is that, that's going to happen. And this is where sometimes we mentioned before that people don't do estate planning because this gets a little hard to talk about sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's important to do because um, without doing it, sometimes the outcome can be completely determined by just which spouse died first. Mm -hmm. And all of it could go to the stepchildren that you didn't intend to happen or none of it to your children because you died and it went to your spouse. So there's just much better ways to deal with that and, and estate planning is you know, the, 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 ba the basic solution to the problem. How about, uh, just for, uh, again, just a few minutes, uh, talk about some highlights of some thoughts related to this, now the second or third or whatever marriage. We just had Elizabeth Taylor pass away recently. But <laughs> right, yeah, another uh, area to deal with uh, is uh, pre uh, premarital agreements and even yeah. postmarital agreements. Um, they're not exactly estate planning, but they're related to that because you can, um, and this applies also to people with domestic partnerships. You can do what's called a pre-registration agreement. Mm -hmm. And the effect is the same mm -hmm. where you determine and you need to have an attorney for each of the partners or each spouse in order to make it um, actually mm -hmm. be effective. Uh, it, it's possible to do it with one attorney, but it's very difficult. To not do. a good idea. Not a good idea at all. But uh, it's important to do that. Uh, if you want to do things like protect children from a prior marriage or if you, I, what I find with my clients is it usually doesn't happen in the first marriage, but if it's a second marriage or the third marriage or Elizabeth Taylor's situation, pretty soon mm -hmm. they're doing them because yeah. uh, these issues come up. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't really feel that we have enough time to talk very much about taxes. Um, Although, well, maybe I'll just give you a, a chance to throw in a couple sentences or something, and uh, and then uh, but, but I'm going to have other shows, you know, totally about estate tax. Right, so. right. I, yeah, the estate tax law has changed a lot. I think people are aware of that, and the estate tax credits are much higher than they were. So, um, you know, it seems pretty much that most people are going to say, "Well, I don't have an estate tax problem. I don't have a tax problem." But the, the law has actually gotten in some ways more complicated and we have a tension between the income tax consequences of decisions that are made and having to do with gains on sale and things like that uh, and the estate tax. And there are choices people can make even under the present law about uh, deferring all of the, the credit until the second death versus you know, taking yeah. half at the first and, sign and later, later taking another credit. But those also have income tax uh, consequences because that affects the basis adjustment on the assets. So these are fairly complicated uh, things to look at, and even for some of the smaller estates, you have to be a little bit, little bit careful about the tension between income taxes and estate taxes, even when you have an, an estate that isn't large enough to uh, be an estate tax okay. problem. Where should you keep your will? Well, there, different people tell you know have different things that they tell their clients. Some lawyers keep them in the in the office. I don't personally do that. I never have because I don't know where my clients are going to be. They don't necessarily know what's going to happen to me. I keep getting these little letters or emails from attorneys. Anybody know Roger Smith? Right. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I get letters saying, did you ever do estate planning for so-and-so? Because they're yeah. just, yeah. there's something, a blanket letter to every lawyer yeah. in, the, in the community. Um, I, I tell clients that they should keep it in a safe deposit box at the bank. 
because the bank doesn't, it's not like your home, it can't be destroyed. I mean, it can be, but the mm -hmm. vault's probably going to still be there. And it's, it's possible under the uh, probate code to get into a bank safe deposit box after a person passes away and to get their estate planning documents. So again, people need to know that's where it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it, it's sometimes helpful to have people who have access to the, uh, to the box. Uh, but I think that's the safest place to keep it. Yeah, so label the key. <laughs> uh, I, had, I actually threw away a safe deposit box key uh, when I was uh, involved with the uh, trust. And unfortunately, well, I did discover where it was because I got the bill uh, on a bank statement. And, um, and I had thrown it away, so we had to have it drilled. And it cost like 150 bucks to open the thing mm -hmm. to learn that it was empty. <laughs> Uh, but there is another thing related to this, and, and one reason to put it in a safe deposit box is that you don't want to doodle on your will. And, yeah, that's and a good when point. you have it accessible at your home, you have a copy at home, but keep the original uh, in the safe deposit box so the, because otherwise you could invalidate your will yeah, uh, accidentally. Clients, <laughs> I've had clients come in with their original documents with that kind of thing, with things written yeah. and things marked out. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Um, I think we're really about out of time. Um, so I think I'm going to thank you. Thank you very much, Bill, my for being pleasure. my guest today. And um, folks, you know, we've been talking about a very important area. It is something that uh, we, we all tend to put off. Um, I personally don't think it's a good idea to do the intuit quick will. Uh, I think it's a good idea to actually uh, sit down with an attorney like Bill and uh, and have a proper estate plan done and really think through the issues and um, so anyway uh, I hope you will do that and uh, we'll think about uh, you know how you're going to provide for your family if something happens to you and or if you don't have a family where would you like your stuff to go is there a charity that you're interested in I think that would be a fine thing to do so with that thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time I'm Financial Insider Weekly